1939, God called a young man from the Texas prairie to begin a ministry that would reach to the ends of the earth. And today, more than 50 years later, Pastor John Osteen has kept that vision of reaching the unreached and telling the untold. Building a church where more than 10,000 people are being touched every week with the gospel. Taking the good news of Jesus Christ throughout North America via television and now making an impact in the nations of the earth, where pastors are trained and supported for a new generation of men like John Osteen, hearing the voice of God and answering that call. From the streets of Fort Worth to a vacant feed store, and now, exploding decades later into a ministry that reaches literally around the globe, a ministry that spans 50 years of miracles. And now, Pastor John Osteen. Welcome to the program today. I'm Lisa Osteen, and we're so glad that you've joined us. We have a very exciting program today. In fact, my dad will not only be preaching to you, but he'll be preaching to over 4,000 international delegates right here at Lakewood Church who have gathered together from over 100 nations to hear the Word of God. It's an exciting time for us. And my dad is going to be preaching on putting on the whole armor of God. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians that we are to put on that armor. It doesn't say that that armor automatically falls on us. We must make an effort every day to put on the whole armor of God. And you know, the Bible also says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers of the darkness of this world. You know, it's important to realize that we have an enemy and to know who that enemy is. The Bible says that he has schemes and strategies strategies and tactics and he will come against you in every area of your life. But you know what's more exciting and more important is to realize that you have the weapons of God. You have the word of God. You have the name of Jesus and you have the armor of God that you can put on every day and you can defeat the enemy in your life. And by the way, I want to say to those of you who are viewing on the Family Channel, be watching for our special program that is going to air on May 12th, that's Saturday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. It is a special program that focuses on the outreaches of Lakewood Church, what God is doing today all over the world. You'll be inspired, you'll be in li uh, lifted up and encouraged, so be sure and watch for that program. Now, let's go back live into the service here at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Here's my dad, John O. Lift up your Bible, make the devil mad and Jesus glad. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My, heart is My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. Be the same. I, am I am about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, indestructible ever-living ever seed, seed of the Word of God. Word of God. I, will I will never be the same. Never, never, never. never, never. I will never be the same. Be In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated and open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. It won't just fall on you. It won't just automatically be in your life. You must put on daily the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles or the strategies of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. We need to know who our enemy is. You people from other countries, you say, well, my country is a hard country. My country is a hard country. My town is a hard town. Listen, folks, the, 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 the idea is not in the town, but it's in you. We see things not as they are, but as we are. And the God of Houston is the God of your town. The God of America is the God of your nation. 
You've got to believe God for your land. You've got to stand and say, no devil, you can't have India. No devil, you can't have Nepal. No devil, you can't have the Isles of the Sea. No devil, you can't have a Bulgaria. No devil, you can't have my country. No devil, you can't have Guatemala. No devil, you can't have Venezuela. No devil, you can't have Mexico. My God will be Lord over my country. We wrestle against these principalities and powers. But you see, we have power over them in the name of Jesus. The devil is not afraid of the name John Osteen. The devil is not afraid of the name Lakewood Church. The devil is not afraid of the name Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Charismatic, Presbyterian, or what have you. But there is one name that causes him to tremble, and that is the name of Jesus. You know, in other days, we've lifted up our denominational names. We've lifted high the name of Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostal, all those denominational names. They've shined brightly, but thank God it's a new day. Those names are getting dimmer, and the name of Jesus is getting brighter. Amen. We are bearers of his name. It's that name of Jesus that breaks the power of the devil. It's the name of Jesus that drives out demon forces. It's the name of Jesus that gives you victory. We have that name, and that name spells victory. Everybody shout Jesus five times. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now the Bible says, Therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now there is an evil day that comes to all of us. Those trials, those tribulations, those tragedies, those dark hours, the evil day. But it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and after having done all to stand. One translation says, after overcoming all, you're still standing up. It will not automatically happen. God told you to put on the whole armor of God. The book of, of Ephesians is one of the greatest books in the Bible. I say if you can understand the book of Ephesians, Colossians, and Romans, and Hebrews, you will understand redemption. I'll tell you folks what the church needs to understand. They quit, need to quit playing church. We need to understand redemption and what it means to the human race. And he said, let your loins be girt about with truth. That's the first thing you do if you want to dress up in the armor of God. You've got to have a revelation of the redemption truth of God. I tell you, I learned this from T.L. Osborne. I tell you, I listened to him and listened to him and listened to him. Stand up so the cameras can get you, Brother T.L. Osborne, one of the greatest evangelists in the world. Give him a hand clap. Give him a good hand clap. Understanding redemption. Oh, we don't want to be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Let's understand. Somebody said, well, I just want to visit church once in a while. I'll go once in a while. I'll go on Sunday morning. And I'm not going anymore. And I'll read my Bible. Listen, folks, you better get in a church somewhere. And you better get yourself founded in redemptive truth. If you will put the word of God in you when you don't need it, God will bring it out of you when you do need it. Get yourself wrapped up in redemptive reality. Then you're immovable, unshakable. You see, when you know redemption, you know you're a new creature. You know you're born again. You know you're the righteousness of God. You know who you are in Christ, what you can do in Christ. You know your rights and privileges. You know that you have authority in the name of Jesus. You're wrapped up in the great redemption of Jesus Christ. You have your loins girt about with truth. Could I have an amen? amen. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. When you walk out of your house, you know you're the righteousness of God. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Everybody shout, no condemnation. No condemnation. Shout it again. No condemnation. Shout it again. No condemnation. See, when you, when you are in Christ, you are made righteous. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And there is therefore now no condemnation. 
You're wrapped in that redemptive truth. You have on the breastplate of righteousness to protect your heart. You don't take anything from the devil. The devil brings up all of your past. Has the devil ever brought up your past? Say amen. amen. You know, you bring up all your past, all your past. He'll tell you what you used to do and all these sins, those skeletons in your closet. You know what you ought to say? Devil, come over here. Come over here, devil, and sit down. I see you're interested in the past. Let's talk about your past. You used to be an angel in heaven, and you fell. You don't have much of a past yourself. And devil, come to think about it, your future, according to the book of Revelation, doesn't look too good either. Amen. As Brother Norval Hayes, stand up Norval Hayes, give him a hand clap. He's teaching in the seminar, seminar here. Norval Hayes has a saying. He said, learn to read the Bible to the devil. You'll give him a nervous breakdown. He'll leave your house muy pronto. I mean, he'll get up and leave. If you say, come over here, devil, let me read you something about my relationship to God. The Bible says, you talk about my past. The Bible says, this is the covenant that I will make with them in those days. I will walk with them. I will dwell in them. They shall be my sons and daughters and their sins and iniquities. I will remember no more forever. Everybody shout forever five times. Now shout it out loud. You know, if you could go up to God the Father right now, you born again people, you on television, or you right here, if you could go to God and say, God, would you take me in your little, com your big computer room and you pull up all of my sins because I feel so bad about them. God would put your name in there. He knows exactly what your name is. And he said, Jesus said, my, I know my sheep. I know about, call them by name. Put your name in there. And that big old computer begins to buzz and, and it reads out there all about you. And God looks at it and he said, well, I, I don't have any record of any sin against you. There's no record here. All I have a record of is on a certain day you passed out of darkness into light. You passed out of death into life. You passed out of the devil's kingdom into my kingdom. All I have a record of is you were born again and now your past is no more. Amen. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. Be fearless. Oh, you said, but Brother Osteen, it was a while I'll sin. Well, join the crowd. How many of you have never sinned since you got saved? Stand up and I'll cast the devil out of you. <laughs> Why, husband is wife, husbands and wives. Uh, you know, they, they argue and do things wrong. But you see, when, when you sin, you ought to just stop. And say, I'm not going to take another step until I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Now, Father, when I take the next step, I am forgiven. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? How much? How much? All unrighteousness. The Bible says, let your loins be girded about with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And, and let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, if you're going to be really successful against the devil and live your Christian life right, you're going to have to be interested in spreading the gospel throughout all the world. Let your feet be shod, ready to fly, to go into all the world. You say, what made Lakewood Church grow like this? Because our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're not trying to find a place of security. We're trying to reach the unreached and tell the untold. And I believe Eastern Europe is going to be shaken by the power of God. I believe Russia is going to be shaken by the power of God. I believe Asia is going to be shaken by the power of God. I believe Mexico, Central America, South America, they're going to be shaken by the power of God. This world is going to be shaken by the power of God. Let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And uh, above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. 
when he throws those fiery thoughts. You're going to die with cancer. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a stroke. You'll never get well. You'll be poor all your life. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never succeed. Those fiery darts, you lift up that shield of faith and they'll be quenched because God says you're more than a conqueror to him that loves you. Could I have an amen? amen? The shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. That helmet of salvation is to go over your mind. The carnal mind is enmity against God. God wants your mind covered. That David said you have covered my head in the day of battle. Listen, listen, preachers. Listen, people from all these nations, over 100 nations here. Listen, Lakewood Church. Listen, the battlefield where the devil rages is in your mind. He'll put a thought, and if you accept that thought, he can dominate you. Be careful what you think. I have a series of messages on thinking the thoughts of God. Don't take your natural thought. Take God's thought. Put that shield of faith down over your head. Go into battle. Don't listen to your crazy mind. Listen to the Word of God. Let your spirit be filled with the Word of God. And go out there and do battle and win the victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One thought can hold you paralyzed for years. One thought can stop your march to evangelize your nation. One thought can keep you in ill health all of your days. One thought that is, it, that is irreconcilable with the Word of God can, can damage your faith. Cast out those thoughts. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. The devil has a strong hold on some of you to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, and bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. You see, it's the realm of imaginations. It's the realm of thought the devil works in. Put the Word of God down over your head. Let your mind be renewed in the Word of God and go into battle and you'll win. Not have a battle, but you'll win the war. Could I have an amen? amen. The helmet, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the what? Word of God. Did you know there are two words for Word of God in the Bible? One is Logos. The other is Rhema. We are to preach the Logos. But you see, the word rhema is where God speaks to you personally. He enlightens the scripture to you. It's a personal word to you. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema of God. You don't live by the Logos. You live by the rhema. If you never have a rhema, you're liable to be defeated at every turn. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema. Thank God for those illuminated scriptures when God speaks to us and we know God's spoken. Could I have an amen? amen? It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema. Not the logos. You can read the logos, but I'll tell you until you get a rhema, when you get a rhema from God, all hell can come against you and you'll stand unshakable. You get a rhema from God. Now this word here, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. I'll tell you who wins battles. People who have taken time to fellowship with God until God has spoken to them. Until God has imprinted on their hearts some word from the Bible. And I used to think that this was a great big long sword like Errol Flynn used to fight with, you know. All those, all those movies that had those uh, three musketeers and all of that. You can't interpret that in anything. Forget it. But anyway, a great big long sword. I could just picture myself going into battle with this great big long sword. Everybody say long sword. Long. You know that kind of goes up on the end. And I could stand here and I could just cut that cameraman right here. 
Just cut him. Stay a long ways away from him. Long, but did you know that this word in Ephesians 6 is not some long sword? Do you know it is a word for a short 18-inch dagger, Roman dagger, that is used in face-to-face -face combat? In other words, God is saying, you're going to face the devil face to face. And you're going to need a dagger for that grappling. The pastor's not there. Your friend's not there. Your husband's not there. Nobody's there. It's just you and the devil. But if you've got the rainbow, you can put him on the run. Take the sword of the Spirit. The rhema of God. Every one of us have our private battles between us and that dark prince of this world. Dodie had her battle with that cancer 1981. And I told her, I said, Dodie, listen, we're going to curse that cancer and then you're going to have to fight your way through. It's just between you and Jesus. And she had those rhemas in her heart day by day, night by night. When they said she could only live a few weeks, she took the rhema. She took the rhema and fought that devil off. No devil, I'll live and not die. No devil, I'll live and not die. No, I I choose life. I choose life. I live and not die. And she stuck that sword into him until he was defeated. It's 1990 and she doesn't have a sign of cancer in her body. Stand up, Dodie. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Take that sword of the Spirit. Now you're going to find redemptive truth taught to you in this convention. And folks on television, you're going to be t hearing about redemptive truth. That's what Lakewood Church is all about. We want to inform and bless and strengthen the body of Christ in every denomination. When you come over here, we don't try to get you to join. You just sit here. Let us teach you. Go back to your church and be a stronger member there. Could I have an amen? amen. But you must, you must find redemptive truth. How many of you don't know everything? Shout amen. amen. How many of you don't know everything? Shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody that doesn't know everything, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you people on television know everything? Certainly you don't. We all need to learn. There was a day when I didn't know about the baptism in the Holy Ghost, healing, casting out devils. Thank God I got in the Bible. Woo. Amen. We need to throw our denominational doctrines out the window and get back in the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Away with man's teaching. Let's obey God. Your denomination didn't save you. Your denomination didn't call you. Your denomination didn't place you in the Lord's work. You will not have to stand at the judgment bar of your denomination. Jesus saved you. Jesus called you. Jesus is your Lord. Let's obey him. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You're going to be hearing the Word of God taught in this conference. You're going to hear it again and again and again, morning, noon, and night. Did you know, listen carefully, one convention, one service can change a man or change a woman, and that man or woman can change a nation. We have pastors here right now. Three years ago, three years ago, they came here. They had a little church, couldn't get more than 400, 450 people in it. They came back here three years later. You'll be meeting these men and hearing them. They have a church now, 5,000 people. And they brought 300 ministers from their country right here from Venezuela, 300 pastors right here in this church. It makes a difference to change a person. You can be changed. Say, I won't go home the same. I will not go home the same person. I'll be full of the Word of God. I'm like a sponge. I'm going to sponge it up. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Now, you people on television, we love you. We don't ask you for a penny. We don't ask you for a thing. We give this as a love gift. We don't even ask you to write us. We just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. What do you need to do? Make Jesus the Lord of your life. You need him not in your head. You need him in your heart. When he gets in your heart, he changes your life. You're born again. Give him your heart and your life. And then go to some good church somewhere and let them teach you the Word of God. If you're in our area, come here and let us teach you. You can go back to your church and bless them. But give your heart to the Lord. Learn redemptive truth. So in the battles of life, when cocaine, when alcohol, when broken homes and broken hearts face you and your family, 
you'll not be defeated. You'll be able to chase the devil off and you can rescue your wife, your husband, your children. You can rescue your own from disease and death and God will show you that he is the Lord, he changes not and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever.